Good morning. Let us all stand and sing number 550. Sing a new song. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. Welcome, everyone. It's great to see everybody today. It was a busy day yesterday. It's been a busy week, I guess, with St. Francis and uh, the Catholics United was here and for their presentation. And yesterday we had a wedding. The Savadas were married, so it was a beautiful, just, just a little small wedding, a group of people. Just worked out nice. It's always neat seeing the sacrament come through. You know, so often things get so big, but it's always neat seeing just the way in which God works in and through his sacraments, especially in weddings and marriages. Uh, and then after that, of course, we had uh, uh, the Mass, and then uh, for uh, the evening Mass with a baptism, beautiful little baby, Nora Amy uh, Nelson was baptized, and it was, she was just jumping up and down. <laughs> waiting to get baptized, but it was just, uh, it was neat all the way through. But God does continue to bless us, and we also have to pray for people also, because uh, uh, I don't know if people have heard that uh, Mike Harvey's wife passed away, Pat passed away, and so that uh, service will be tomorrow over at Carlson, mm -hmm. and uh, so we keep uh, the Harveys in prayer also. But as we prepare to enter more deeply into these sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father and intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. Naaman went down and plunged into the Jordan seven times at the word of Elisha, the man of God. His flesh again became like a child, the flesh of a little child, and he was clean of his leprosy. Naaman returned with his whole retinue to the man of God. On his arrival, he stood before Elisha and said, now I know there is no God in all the earth except in Israel. Please accept a gift from your servant. Elisha replied, As the Lord lives whom I serve, I will not take it. And despite Naaman's urging, he still refused. Naaman said, If you will not accept, please let me, your servant, have two mule loads of earth, for I will no longer offer holocaust or sacrifice to any other God except to the Lord, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, remember Jesus Christ, raised from the dead, a descendant of David. Such is my gospel, for which I am suffering, even to the point of chains, like a criminal. But the word of God is not chained. Therefore, I bear with everything for the sake of those who are chosen, 
so that they too may obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus together with eternal glory. This saying is trustworthy. If we have died with him, we shall also live with him. If we persevere, we shall also reign with him. But if we deny him, he will not deny us. If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny himself. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voices, saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go show yourself to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned glorifying God in a loud voice, and he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise One of the things that... What is love? One of the things that I noticed last night as, a, as a began the Mass and we had the baptism is all the different angles that you can come at Scripture passages with. They're meant to be that way, to be open, so you can see different insights into what the authors are trying to tell us. Notice even with the, with the Gospel passage today. Have you ever thought about, what about those other nine? What happened with those? They fo evidently followed what Jesus was taught, had told them to do. Go show yourselves to the priests. But why did a Samaritan come back to Jesus? A foreigner. They must have been on the border between uh, Samaria and uh, uh, Judea. Right on the border by Jerusalem. Because there's a Samaritan along with them. A Samaritan, if he would have went into the temple area, would not have been welcomed into the temple area. He was unclean. He was unfit to be in the temple area. And so he probably realized that he had been clean and returned back to Jesus to give him thanks, to bow down before him, to recognize the gifts that, that God worked in his life. 
especially at that time, restoring him back to his community. Because leprosy, which was probably met, well, one of many different skin diseases in, in that area, in that culture, would have had him outside of his community, even in Samaria. But now he can go back into the community. He can be with people because they don't have to worry about, the people don't have to worry about catching something from him. To see what was restored in that man, in those other nine people. But then we can look at the other story with Naaman, can't we? The Syrian king, or the Syrian uh, commander of an army who comes to the king of Israel at that time. And he says he wants to be clean. The commander of the Syrian army has sent a letter from his king to the king of Israel also. It's a great story. Go back and read it. It's not as well known as some of the other stories. But the king of Israel tears his garments because he says, Who am I? What are you trying to do to me? I see what you're trying to do. You're going to force things upon me. And then you're going to come in. And of course, the commander just humbles himself. He could have had his army come in. Elisha, the prophet, hears about it. The, command, the king tearing his garments. And he goes over, to the commander of the army then goes over, Naaman goes over to see the prophet Elisha. Elisha doesn't even go out to greet him. He just says, go wash yourself seven times in the Jordan River. Again, the commander of the army, of the conquering army, and you don't even go out to greet him? <laughs> and the servants just tell him. They convince him to go down into the river to be washed clean. And he is. He's so impressed by it that he wants to take seven, a couple of uh, cartloads of the land where he's at back to his home country so he can stand upon that ground to give worship to God. It's an impressive story. You can see how it relates with baptism, can't we? Wash it, washing in the waters of the Jordan River. Jesus himself would go into those waters of the Jordan River and would come out sanctifying those waters, giving us an opening for us to receive his graces in our lives. Notice what Jesus tells the Samaritan man now. Stand up. Your faith has saved you. Stand up. Your faith has saved you. Faith. It's a theological virtue given to us. Notice it's a theological virtue it comes from God. It's a virtue to be built up in our lives. We have to practice it. We have to come to an understanding of what our faith is and the gifts that God gives us. That's why God gives us all these different stories so they can break open different understandings, different riches in our lives and to see the blessings he wishes to give us. But we have to practice it, don't we? And boy, some of the gifts that he gives us are so simple. Washing ourselves in water. I baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Through the ministry of the church, I absolve you of your sins. Being consecrated as a priest. A couple up here yesterday exchanging vows. Some simple words. They're the ones that perform the sacrament. Being confirmed. I can't remember if I'm missing any more of them. <laughs> oh, the Eucharist, of course. Simple bread. What appears to be bread. And we consume it. God, how simple can it get? Naming, go wash yourself seven times in the water to see the way in which the power of God works in our lives. 
And he continually asks us to recognize it, to grow in that understanding of the simplicity of the way in which God comes to us. And it's all free. It's given to us freely by Christ. All we have to do is ask him, follow his instructions. Grow in that richness of the understanding of what is laid out before us in our lives. I couldn't help but think about that even yesterday as I went to the USCCB website and I was going to go through the readings. And of course, that was on there. It came out a couple weeks ago, even about the national synthesis of the people of God in the United States. It's the diocesan phases of the synod. What is taking place with the synod? Remember when we had it? We had a grouping back here for each church, and then it went to the diocese? Well, now all the dioceses have come together, and they've produced a document on it. Next, it'll go over to Rome. What are the questions, though, that are being raised up in there? What is it that people are seeking, like a Naaman? like the lepers that are outside, away from Jesus. Because they're all crying out, aren't they? We can see it out in the world, how people are crying out so much. Have mercy on me. We say it at the beginning of the Mass. We cry out to God each and every time we begin the liturgy. Heal me. Allow your grace to come into my life. The synod is all about raising questions. Where is it that we need to go out as a church and meet the people? Because they're crying out in so many different ways. Lord, have mercy. Come and heal me. See the graces, how the graces wish to work in people's lives. But first we have to recognize how they work in our lives how it is that Christ wishes to work in our lives. Because the more that we can recognize it, the more we can give it out to other people and to give that love that Christ wishes to work out in the world. But he's going to do it through us. That's the way he wants to do it, I should say. But that's only by us opening up that understanding and that love of who Christ is and how he comes into our lives. Because there's a lot of lepers out there. And I know there's a lot of leprosy in here. <laughs> a lot of things that need to be healed. But he does continue to heal. Show us his love and his mercy. So that he can also say, stand up and walk because your faith has saved you. May we all continue to grow in that richness and that understanding of who Christ is the simplicity of who he is, the faith he gives us, so that we can also stand up and go because our faith has saved us. And let's rise and let's profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father of the all.
from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With humility and confidence, let us bring our petitions before the throne of the Lord. For Nora Amy Nelson, who was baptized here this weekend, may she continue to grow in the love and spirit of Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord may continue to draw forth holy and faithful servants to shepherd and bring heal healing to his flock. Let us pray to the Lord that a spirit of understanding, forgiveness, and love may overcome divisions among all people, we pray to the Lord. Lord that during this Respect Life Month, our resolve will be strengthened to cherish and protect the gift of every human life. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For our military, first responders, and all caregivers, May they be supported by our prayers and comforted by their faith. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Holy Spirit may strengthen the faith of all families in this faith community, drawing them closer to the Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that our beloved dead who have gone before us in faith may live forever in the presence of God. Let us pray to the Lord. For the people of the parishes, let us pray to the Lord. Please pause to add your own intentions in silence. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Please join us in praying the vocation's prayer. O oh God, we, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, Pray for us. Pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Merciful Father, hear our prayers and grant them, we ask, in accordance with your divine will, through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please join in singing number 396, Drawn to You. Thank you.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise of the Lord Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful, with the sacrificial offerings, that through these acts of devotedness we may pass over to the glory of heaven, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess a pledge of life eternal. For having received the first fruits of the Spirit, through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so, with all the angels, we praise you, as in joyful celebration we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and given you thanks. He said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up 
for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and given you thanks. He said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Benedict and St. Basil, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope, and James our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
And at the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. It's not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And for those that are unable to re uh, receive our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament, we offer this prayer for spiritual communion. It can also be found on page 237 of the Breaking Bread. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
Please join in singing in the breaking of the bread, number 322. Yeah. 
And let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us sharers of his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a few announcements. Of course, the funeral will be tomorrow for uh, Pat Harvey over at Carlson's. More information is on the website. Also, the funeral mass for Ruth Mason will take place on Saturday at 11 a.m. Uh, we're currently at 59% of our CSA goal, so thanks for everybody for their continued support of the Catholic Service Appeal. Uh, so far, our school annual fund, we're at about 22% of reaching our goal. If you have, haven't yet had a chance to participate, uh, please uh, consider returning your commitment card or dropping it off in a mail or at the school off or parish office, or even in the, in the collection baskets. Uh, thank you for those that have helped support the Catholic School, uh, Nativity School. Uh, today there will be a joyful song, ecumenical music festival. Uh, the music uh, goes from 2 to 5 p.m. with a chili and cornbread supper to follow. Both events are free with all donations going towards three local nonprofits. There are over 10 separate groups performing and several that include some of our talented musicians here from Nativity. Come feed your soul with uplifting music and your tummy with yummy food. 50-50 <laughs> raffle, we're at, well, we're approaching $16,000. Uh, so please thank you for your continued support and anybody else that would like to purchase tickets or some available at the uh, script table. That will take, the drawing will take place at the Pines Event Center on October 22nd. Uh, more details are in the bulletin there. There will also be a mass over there. People have been asking if there's going to be a mass over there. We're going to have a 4 o'clock mass over here and over there and a 4.30 mass here also on that day. So, A Faith Alive event is also this morning following 9.30 mass. All families are welcome to share and learn more about their faith. Uh, details are also in the bulletin. And I see script is for sale in the back of the church also. And bow your heads for God's blessing. May the peace of God, which, sur which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And as we leave, let us sing Tend the Ground, number 626. Mm -hmm.